Yo, what is up guys, Ghost here, and today I want to offer you guys a few tips and tricks with the helicopters in Battlefield 2042. I know that most players fall into that trap of trying to fly a helicopter, instantly crash into a building or get killed by AA missiles, and pretty quickly they give up on improving altogether. After all, there are so few of these vehicles for each team, and simply spawning in one is an accomplishment in itself. Now, I'm not the best helicopter pilot out there, but I have always been a pretty decent vehicle user in Battlefield, and I do keep noticing a lot of comments asking me about my settings in game and for other tips and tricks. So hopefully this video will help some of you guys out. Now, this will be the first part of a multi-part tutorial, as long as there's some interest for it. So since going over every subject of flying helicopters in Battlefield would probably take well over an hour, we're gonna break this down step by step. Before we get started, feel free to subscribe if you do enjoy the content. We're almost at 40,000, so that'd be awesome. Plus, that way you won't miss any future Battlefield videos like the next part of this tutorial. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the basics here. Controls, key bindings and sensitivities, and then I'm going to show you guys very basically how the helicopter physics work so you get a better understanding of how you can make the helicopter do what you want it to do and fly nice and smoothly. So for these examples, we are going to be using the Nightbird as in my opinion, it is the best all round helicopter in the game, but of course, this can be applied to the other helicopters as well. All right, so first of all, you wanna head in game, come down to options and go to mouse and keyboard. Of course, if you're playing on controller, then uh, click on controller instead. Go to global and first of all, you wanna make sure that mouse raw input is on. And then if you're like me, you wanna change vertical flight to on for aircraft. I personally prefer this. I've just always done that in Battlefield games. So don't forget to do that if that's what you normally would do. After that, head over to vehicles. Now, for me, you know, aim sensitivity in vehicles, this is going to control mainly the right hand stick or the mouse hand of uh, how you're aiming in the helicopters. For me, I like 20% aim sensitivity with a mouse DPI of 1600. That's probably not going to tell you much if you play on a controller though. So, you know, I'll show you guys in game a little bit in a while, but uh, I find that 20% is a good base sensitivity. Vehicle third person field of view, you want to put that all the way up to 88 to the maximum because in third person that is going to give you the peripheral vision that you need, the biggest wide angle that you can see threats off from a distance and you're not going to be aiming or firing in this mode anyway so why not have as big a field of view there as you can. Now weapon zoom, I prefer to have this as toggle rather than hold, it just seems easier to me. Um, Gunner zoom and driver zoom you'll see I have on the right click here, but airplane and helicopter zoom, I actually rebind that to the middle mouse button. And that is because I prefer to have right click as the rear view camera. That may be because I'm used to it from previous Battlefield games like BF4, but if you're used to having the rear view camera on the middle mouse and zoom on the right click, then that is absolutely fine. Just do whatever works for you. Invert vertical flight, we already went over that one. Aircraft control sensitivity and helicopter sensitivity. So these are the two different sliders where you can change uh, the aircraft control sense for the jets or the helicopter sensitivity for, of course, the helicopters. So I have mine at 70, so let's say 20% overall sensitivity and then 70 here on the specific helicopter one. Again, you're gonna wanna mess around with this and find out what works for you. Helicopter control assist, you definitely want that off. If you have it on, the helicopter will hover wherever you are in the air without you giving it any throttle input whatsoever. I just find that this is unnatural and it doesn't really teach you as much about how the helicopter maneuvers. So definitely turn this off. You want to learn to fly helicopters the right way. Now, a few key bindings I like to change. So come back here to global and go and edit key bindings if you are, of course, on PC. I like to put uh, well, let's actually head over to helicopter here. That's the right thing to do. Uh, so yeah, I like to put full map on tab. Normally tab is scoreboard and the M key here is actually the full map. So I switch these two around. You don't really need to look at the scoreboard. It's not a big deal, but looking at the full map can be super handy, especially when you're in a helicopter. If you want to check if the enemy heli or an enemy jet has spawned, anything like that, super handy key binding. 
I set B for exit vehicle because, you know, if you're spawning the WASDA keys, it's pretty easy to hit E by accident and bail out of your helicopter mid-air. Kind of embarrassing too, so I just, you know, switched it onto B instead, so I'm not going to do that by mistake. Now, otherwise, movement here is pretty much default. I don't really mess around with this stuff at all. Rear view camera, of course, as I mentioned before, that's on the right click, and everything else is just default. Now, one other handy config file change that you're gonna to wanna to make, actually go here into my documents, go to Battlefield 2042, settings, Proce profile, uh, and then open this with WordPad or Notepad, anything will work, and then hit Control F and search for, uh, I think it's GST input, and then it's free look something. Yeah, that's the one down there, GST input free look sensitivity. By default, this will be set to 0.5. I've turned this all the way up to 25. I actually think once you get past a certain amount, I have tested this with, with 10. I then turned it up to 25 and it didn't feel any different for me. But what this will change is your free look sensitivity. If you hold right click or hold in the right thumbstick, I believe, and you want to look around the cockpit of the helicopter. Um, sometimes that can be handy. You do want to look to the left or the right out of the window. Sometimes you want to look above the helicopter to see if there is a helicopter hovering up above you. So I don't know why, but in Battlefield 2042, it's just ridiculously low. So when it comes to maneuvering, your left stick or the keyboard, if you're on PC, is going to control the throttle and yaw, whilst the right stick or mouse will control pitch and roll. And whenever moving, you're going to have to use a combination of all four of these planes of movement to make the helicopter do what you want. In general, I recommend keeping your camera in third person mode whenever moving and only switch to first person whenever you need to aim at a target. All right, so first things first, how to actually gain and lose altitude quickly. So you might want to gain altitude quickly if you're in a heli one-on-one. -on -one. Altitude is kind of king, and generally speaking, whoever has the higher altitude is going to win that one-on-one. -on -one. Now, most people will just hold W or push up on the left stick and just go upwards like this. This is going to take way too long. If you actually pitch back the helicopter like that and then go forward again, you'll see that you're gaining altitude much faster by doing that. So... A lot of times if you're in a one-on-one -on -one with a helicopter and you pull off that maneuver, get up above him, he won't be able to aim at you, and a lot of the time he'll just crash. Now, let's say you're up here, you get locked on. You don't have any flares. You're like, oh no, I'm getting locked on, i got to get down. You kind of just roll your heli over like that. And you lose a bunch of altitude really, really fast. And then maybe you're heading for this wall here and you're going to duck down and try to line of sight that lock on, right? And you can see if I just hold S on the keyboard here and we lose altitude that way, it is just painfully slow. This is way slower in Battlefield 2042 than it is in previous games like BF4, for example. The helicopters just feel way more floaty, so barrel rolls, definitely your friend. Okay, let's talk about strafing around targets here because... A lot of the time, people will kind of get too fixated on a target. Um, they just end up crossing into the ground. So if you sort of pitch the helicopter to the side like this, so I'm just using my mouse here, or you would use your right stick if you're on controller, keep holding up on the throttle, and basically you're transitioning that upward movement into a side-to-side -side movement. So you're sort of half using the rotor to keep yourself uh, moving to the right, but you're half using it to keep yourself elevated as well. As you'll see, if I just let go of all my inputs here, uh, eventually the helicopter will just start falling to the ground. Um, you are going to have to give it some throttle to keep it going. So it's easy as that, really. You know, you want to shoot these guys. You can pivot to the side as well. Go around this side. Maybe you see a guy there and you're like, oh, wait, I see that guy. Let's, you know, pivot back and get him. That's generally how you want to aim in the helicopters. And we will go over how to actually aim with the miniguns and the best weapons in that in another video. Okay, now let's talk about how to go fast. So in the helis, your altitude can be transitioned into velocity. So if you're up high like this and you go and angle your heli down 
you'll see if I go in first person, we're up to 230 kilometers per hour, which I think is the max speed of the of the Nightbird. And you can start going really, really fast. But you can also kind of come about like that and, and stop on a dime. So you're always just using this upwards thrust, of course, of the rotors to brake. A lot of people might think, oh, if I want to brake here, I'm going to pull back. I'm going to brake that way. That usually doesn't do as good of a job. You know, if you've seen the target down here, let's see, right? You see this, you see this dude down here. Uh, let's just pretend this is an enemy. You can just kind of come about like that. Use the rotors by pointing them in the other direction. And we've got a nightbird here. I am just going up against the uh, the AI here. Did we shoot the pilot out? Okay. No, oh, he's still got somebody. Okay, we shot the other guy out as well. How many people have they got in this helicopter, man? Another free tip there for you as well. Try to shoot out the pilots if you can, because it's way quicker than actually taking down the armor of the helicopter. So yeah, try and get used to, you know, coming in fast here. And then if you want to stop quickly, just kind of give your rotors a flick in the opposite direction, and it will almost instantaneously stop you. You don't really have to hold down on the left stick or hold S on keyboard to, to stop yourself or slow yourself down. You're pretty much using your upward thrust of the rotors in order to go in whichever direction you want. You will notice that you have to constantly give the helicopter inputs. You're constantly giving it tiny little inputs on the left stick and the right stick all the time. You know, you're constantly just tapping that throttle up to keep yourself floating. There really is never a movement where you just let go of all the controls completely. And probably the number one tip would be just always, 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 always stay moving. As soon as you get stagnant you know if you see a guy down here and you're like oh i want to shoot him i'm going to just i'm going to stay still like this and i'm going to shoot him like this if somebody sees your helicopter just floating down towards the ground they're going to be able to predict that super easily that's why you see better pilots strafing around a target like this and then switching to this direction so you know if somebody on the ground is lining up an rpg they don't know whenever you're going to make that switch Now, again, coming back to sensitivity here, I said earlier you're going to have to uh, play around with sensitivity and see what works for you. A lot of the inputs for the helicopter on the left stick or the keyboard aren't going to be controlled by sensitivity at all, so those aren't going to matter. It's just the small sort of fine-tuned movements that you do on the right stick or the mouse that are going to be controlled by sensitivity. So even though you do have a pretty low sense, you know, that's not going to mean you won't be able to be agile and snappy in the helicopter. So maybe start low, and put it up a little bit higher, and if you're having trouble aiming at targets, turn it down a little bit. Another great thing to practice is is getting through um, small areas. Unfortunately, this shutter here is, has been closed off there. Uh, let's see if we can find something to try and fly through, because it does help you a lot with the understanding of the way momentum works in the heli. Like, once you've got that momentum going, your helicopter is going to sort of stay flying in that direction. And if you don't give it any more input, it's going to keep going in that direction. So what you can sort of do is head in that direction. Let's say you're trying to line of sight a lock on. And then just try and tuck your, tuck your tail underneath. The tail is always going to be the thing that, you know, gets you. So you can just practice, like, flying in and out of buildings and just get nice and comfortable with the movement. Now, the best way to practice in Battlefield 2042, since there's no test range, is to go into a single player game with easy AI like I'm doing here and just practice flying around until you get nice and comfortable. I know simply controlling the helicopter might be a piece of cake for some of you guys, but you really want to get these movements down to muscle memory, get nice and comfortable with your chosen sensitivity so that you can concentrate on incoming threats, finding targets and the more important aspects of flying. So hopefully this has given you guys a bit of a better understanding on how to control the helicopters. In the next episode we'll be talking about how to dodge and evade missiles effectively so you can stay alive and help out your team. So if you want to see that one let me know below by leaving a like if you enjoyed it and feel free to chime in on what you'd like to see. I am also considering 
another jet tutorial since they've changed quite a bit since I made the last one upon release and jets have also recently returned to Conquest with the new spawn system. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.